So here we have two of some of my favorite false teachers alive today. Okay, we've got Layton and Frank Turek. Now, Frank isn't as bad as Layton, but he's close. Okay, and so their question is, how do Calvinists resolve the problem of man and evil? And so let's go ahead and watch the clip, and then I'll give my take after. He could have created a robot world where we re really don't have free will, but it seems to me that's not a loving world. That's not a moral world. Let me go back to your question because there's another implication to this. You asked, what are the implications of being an apologist and being a Calvinist? Yeah. For me, uh, I've noticed that when Calvinists or apologists try and answer questions regarding evil, they, they can't give a robust answer because uh, someone who believes as we do that man has free will, that God still chooses, but we still have free will. We still choose as well. We're chosen but free. We can answer the problem of evil in a much more robust manner. They can't. Uh, you know, people will ask, well, why did God allow Satan to sin? And the Calvinists will say, well, they're going to have to say, well, God didn't just allow it. He wanted him to sin. He, he gave him the, the impetus to sin, like he gives us the impetus to sin and the impetus to choose him. So uh, uh, someone who believes in free will can say the reason God allows evil is because he wants this to be a moral universe, so he gives us free choice. The only way we can love and make moral choices is if we have some sort of libertarian free will. But that opens up the possibility for us to do evil as well. And God thought it was worth having a moral universe. He thought love was, was worth giving people free will so they could love, but that opens up the possibility for evil. Uh, he right. could have made a robot world, which... Maybe I'm characterizing it too uncharitably, but that seems to me what Calvinism is, at least the hard five-point version. He could have created a robot world where we re really don't have free will, but it seems to me that's not a loving world. That's not a moral world. But God thought it was worth allowing free will so he could give us the ability to love and he could solve the problem of evil by taking it upon himself. That he comes mm -hmm. into this universe and allows the very creatures that freely chose to sin against him to torture and kill him so he could take their punishment on himself and then offer salvation back to them. Mm -hmm. That seems to make much more sense of the problem of evil than just saying, well, God determines all thing and things, and it's a mystery as to why evil exists. So the first thing we hear Frank say that's just absolutely ridiculous is that a world in which we aren't free, free will, speaking about free will, would not be a loving world. That's what he said. So basically saying that a world in which man is not sovereign is not a loving world. Do you see how self-centered false professing Christians are? Now, the second part of the video is dealing with their judgment over the right for a Calvinist to be an apologist. So Frank says, and pay attention to what these men are saying. I don't just call them false teachers for no reason. Frank says, and I quote word for word, he says, I've noticed that Calvinists who are apologists try and answer questions regarding evil. They can't. When they try to answer questions regarding evil, they can't give a robust answer. Because as we believe, God has free will, but so do we. God chooses, but so do we. The Calvinist can't give a robust answer, but we can. Now, this is flat out blasphemy. What Frank just said here is demonic. Now, what do the scriptures say about people that add to or take away from the scriptures? It says that they are cursed, Galatians 1.8. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one preached to you, let him be accursed. Frank just said that the God of the scriptures has free will, but so do we. That God chooses, but so do we. What does the Lord say in scripture? John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring much fruit. So the question is, how do dead men choose God? How do dead men make themselves alive? They can't. Now, it is true that the sinner assists the Holy Spirit in the process of sanctification and salvation, but it is God alone that saves. It's either 100% God or it's nothing. There will be no boasting on that day, Ephesians 2, 9. And why? Because it's all of God and none of us. Now, you also just heard Frank said that man has the ability to be good. He just chooses not to. No, Frank, you are wrong. Again, the Bible makes it clear that you are outside, that if you are outside of Christ, all you do is sin. There are no good people, for all have sinned and fallen short. Romans 3, 23, Romans 3, 10. Okay. Now, I can go on and on with men like Frank and Layton. Their theology is absolutely terrible. It's just terrible, okay? And Frank can sound really good before a bunch of college students that don't know anything, but when you really break down what he's saying, you find out that this man really doesn't, it's not that he doesn't know anything, it's that he's chosen, 
or, or like I like to say, doesn't have eyes to see, okay? See, one thing you have to understand is that you must have the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is what reveals truth to you, okay? And a lot of times you'll see these professing Christians who sound really good and they're really, they're really versed in and studied, but the truth is they've never been born again. They really don't and aren't able to see truth because they don't possess the Holy Spirit. These men aren't true Christians. They're lost, okay? And uh, this is the case with Frank and Layton Flowers. They're just lost men that are masquerading themselves as Christians. It, 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 it blows my mind the type of things these men say. And often I have to remind myself, why can't they see what I see in Scripture? It, it's clear as day. Why can't they see this? And it's because God has their heart hard. They've never been regenerated and uh, they're still natural men. This is the problem.